God bless you, online family. We are so excited that you have tuned in. Let me tell you, we have just come from a powerful service, and I'm not going to tell you all about it just yet because I'm going to let Ms. D do that. But please do me a favor. Please drop a comment right there where you're at. Tell us where you're watching from. We would love to just uh, take this time to just shout out and say Thank you so much for being with us. And Diana, tell the people out there how wonderful the Lord has been to us today. Yes. God is so good. He's been so great. We're having a powerful service. Thank you so much for joining Lifeline this morning. I heard where we have viewers from Kenya, from yes. Pakistan, Argentina, just different places all over the world. Let me tell you, we are praying for you. We love you. We believe God is going to bless you right where you are, whether you're in your living room, in the car, at home, wherever you are. We're praying for you. We love you. So come on in and join us for worship.
know that I serve a champion. Come on, let's sing this together. Hey, here it goes when you move. Such an easy thing for you to do. And your head is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. And your voice is calling me. Say that you can do all things, but fail. Cause he never lost a battle. Come on, no, he's never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never will. Come on, who receives that this morning with boldness? I believe that today. Hey. Come on, let's sing this. Say everything is possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now. Shaking my heart of stone, taking over like it's Jericho. My walls are all crashing down. And right now, I know you're able that my
I said he'll never fail you nor leave you nor forsake you in Jesus name and that's not because we say it's because it's in his word it's a promise church and there's something about God's promises that if you also read in his word it's yes and amen I don't know what you're coming here today I feel a really heavy spirit that you just need to surrender this week not this past week this coming week I don't know who that is for today but right now as we worship our prayer warriors are setting up ready to pray with you ready to intercede with you in faith knowing that God is working good on your behalf in Jesus name but right now in this moment can we get in the posture of worship with our hands lifted and our hearts open Holy Spirit we give you room we give you room to come and do what you want to do not only in us but through us and all around us Holy Spirit come and speak to us come and move come and just dwell with us today we just want to be with you we love you Holy Spirit we just pray that you receive this offering of worship that is it's to you and for you and only for you but we just thank you for today we just rebuke any distractions anything on our minds we ask that you clear our minds and our hearts to just be able to pour it out to you and worship you in spirit and in truth but we just worship your precious name today in Jesus mighty name we pray amen I can feel your spirit stirring. Oh, just tell him I've been praying. And I've been praying, you've been working. Oh, you're working it all from good. So fan the flame and keep it burning. And you're refining in the furnace. Oh, just remind your heart today. That all the waiting will be worth it Cause you're working it all from good
the Lord is really imparting a spirit of hunger in this church. And God is so good that he will always honor hunger if it's for him. And so you may think we're just singing a song about miracles, signs, and wonders, but Jesus, pastor, talked about it. That everything Jesus was able to do, he said through Holy Spirit, we would be able to do. But am I, do I have to be old enough? Do I have to go to church long enough? You need to believe with your heart and you need to receive him first and foremost. But in order for him to come and do something, what do we need to do, church? Surrender. I was looking back at all the miracles in the Bible and it always took a surrender for God to come in and change something. Whether they were blind, whether they were lame, even in Egypt with, the, with Moses and the Israelites. It's like, God, I don't know what to do. We literally have a scene in front of us. I'll split it for you. You're going to split it? Yes, I'll split it for you. Because I will it and it will be done. But I just reflect on how hard the waiting may have been. Is God really going to come through? Is God really going to do it? Yeah, we sing it. Is he really going to come through? Look at the miracle that we're sitting in church. The Bible says his word does not return void. And if the Bible says that he's working good on my behalf, even if I don't see it or understand it, he is working good on my behalf. And so many times we don't see it and we think it's his absence. No church, it's his presence. We need to learn to react and respond before we even get the question. We need to learn to pray and to worship. Don't wait for the problem to arise for the breakthrough. Already worship for it because they'll be ready for you. So today, can we just declare that in this place? Maybe your family's not with you today. Can we declare that they will be? And as we worship, we know God is working and God is moving and he's stirring and he's sending people. Can we just pray for that today? Oh, Holy Spirit, we lift up our families. We lift up those that don't know you, that we want them to be here today. And when we speak a miracle in their life, that you bring them here. You bring them to salvation. More importantly, Lord, you bring them to you. And may we reflect on this years from now that look, my family's next to me, everything I prayed for. It took some waiting, it took some praying, but God, you are faithful. But can we declare those miracles in this place today? Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Just remind your heart, and if he told the son, and if he told the son, who oh, we know, and it did, come on, he will again. Can if he told the storm, and to be still, and it did, he will again. Can if he told the sea, and where to split, and it did, he will again. Can if he told the walls, that's it, come on, and they did. happened a father just brought her little girl who he wanted to accept Jesus he was just a child he says I want to accept Jesus and she accepted Jesus right now she didn't have to wait for after church she didn't have to wait y'all not hearing what I'm saying because it's not your child but if it was your child you'd be cheering for joy the Bible says that when one comes to the Lord I said when one comes to the Lord there's a pepper alley in heaven taking place oh my god I wonder if I had 15 people who are grateful celebrate for somebody 
just as victory. We're so grateful. We had church this morning. Welcome to Lifeline Heart of Worship. Healing for the body, mind, and soul is our vision. According to Matthew 22, 37. We don't want Pastor Pepper or Lifeline or a church to make you whole. We want Jesus to make you whole. Because he's the only one that can. I wonder if you're here for the first time, would you just kind of wave at me if you're here for the first time? Uh, they're bringing in some more chairs, so just be, yeah, we're at standing room capacity again, church. Yeah. Wave at me if you're here for the first time. God bless you. Anybody else over here on this side? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you back there. Thank you so much for joining us. We love to praise the Lord at full volume, and we are not apologizing for any of that. We love to praise the Lord. Why? Because we were once lost, but now we're found. We were once broken, but he's putting us back together again. So again, if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. <laughs> but we serve a perfect God, and we're so grateful for what he's doing in our community. Amen? Can you high-five somebody right there and just say, hey, it's good. God's good to be in the house of the Lord. All right. So again, I just said two people, and you did like five people, guys. Don't, don't be a disobedient generation. Okay, so just really quick because I, I, I want to get right, we want to get right into the Word of God. It was amazing this. One. I got saved this morning, by the way. It was awesome. Uh, uh, we have an awesome guest today, and I hate to call him a guest because he's family. He's my brother, really, what he is. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you guys for your generosity. It's your generosity that allows us to do what we do, and it allows one person that took today. That's all it is. If, it, that's all, if all this was for one person, for that young girl that accepted Jesus today, that's what it's all about. So thank you for your generosity. Whether you give online or you give here, thank you so much. You know we don't pass the bucket. We believe that God's going to bless you. And I'm praying that God blesses you, that God blesses you so you can bless this house. Amen? Amen. So without any more hesitation, because we want the Word of God. Man, it touched my heart this morning. It's going to bless your heart. All the way from El Paso, my brother from another mother who has two last names as a name. Please welcome Cruz Ramirez. Can you give it up for Pastor Cruz? Come on, give it up, give it up. Yeah, hey, if you love Jesus this morning, I need you to make the most noise, the best praise, the biggest hallelujah. Yeah, if you know he's good, come on, if you know he's good, if you know he's faithful, if you know that he's undefeated, undisputed, there's no one like him. If you know that you know that you know that God is for you, he's not mad at you, he's on your side today, tomorrow, for all of time. God is for you. I know I got to preach, man, but I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. And I just want to say this to you. It doesn't matter how many times. It doesn't matter what you've done, who you've done it with, how many times you've done it. You need to know before we even go into the Word, you need to know that God is on your side. God is for you. He's here. And He can do in one moment. What it would, well, let, what you and I probably could not do in a whole lifetime, he could do one moment. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. Well, then with every hand lifted high, Father, we thank you for this time around your word. Father, speak to us this morning. We need you. We need your voice. We need your direction. We need your guidance. Father, be what your word said you can be. Your word is a hammer, so break all the hard places in our lives. Your word is like a salve. It's like a balm, the balm in Gilead. For the hurting places in our life, be a soothing presence. Your word is a light. So in the dark areas of our lives, Lord, bring illumination. Your word guides us, so remove confusion. Remove chaos. Right now, by the authority of the Word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, I declare that we have a suspension of chaos, that what has been trying to distract you, 
stops now so that you can clearly hear the voice of the Lord speak to you. Lord, I declare that James 4, 8 becomes real right now. That as we draw close to you, you draw close to us. We bring to you all of our humanity. We bring to you all of our natural. But when you lean into us, you bring all of your supernatural. We do the best we can, but you do what only you can do. So in our time together today, Father, will you authenticate the preaching of your word by miracle signs and wonders happening even while we're preaching, that we don't need to do a special call to the altar, a special prayer, that just the preaching of your word brings healing into bodies. Right now, thank you, Father, that right now you're relieving, right now you're restoring, right now you're healing. Symptoms are leaving right now by the power of the name of Jesus. Those who walked in with a migraine, with limited range of motion, who walked in with ailments and symptoms, I pray right now, Father, that you would bring verification to your spirit and to your presence and that those things would be gone in the name of Jesus. Father, those of us that came in with low-lying clouds of gloom and depression, fear, doubt, uncertainty, pain, disappointment, Father, your spirit can step in and blow those clouds away. Thank you now, Father, that you're the lifter of our head, according to Psalm chapter 3. You, O Lord, are a shield about me. You're my glory, and you're the lifter of my head. So now, Father, I pray that you're the lifter of our heads. I thank you that there's a lifting in this place, a refreshing in this place. Father, let us always be impacted by your presence, by your word. Now put your hand over your heart. And just pray this with me, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me by your word and by your spirit. I'm listening in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, if you love Jesus, give it to him one more time. (laughs) Hey, say hi to two or three people around you. Say hi to two or three people around you. Give them a high five, a fist bump. Let them know you're excited to be in church with them, and then you can grab your seats. Man, come on. Third week in our new home, and it's standing room only. We're at capacity. Can I tell you, can I tell you today that what the Lord is doing at Lifeline Church is not normal? Ustedes no están bien. Esto no es normal. It's extraordinario. I'm in the RGV. I can talk Spanish, right? A little bit. Si hablo. I'm not one of those no sabo kids. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I do sabo. <laughs> hey, before we move forward, I just, I, I got to give honor where honor is due. And I'm such a, I'm, I'm such a fan and such, I really am such a fan of Pepe Cervantes. He's... An incredible man of God. He's a remarkable leader. He's a maniac in the best way. And we just honor you. We honor your life, your leadership. Happy birthday. In case you didn't know, I know he looks like he's 25. But he just, he just hit a, uh, a milestone birthday. And we're believing best days ahead. Your, 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 str- your strength is still before you. Your greatest feats are still before you. There are still mountains to take, barriers to break, and territories to take. And we just are grateful to be a part of your journey and your faith. Thank you for leading us all so well. Now, they say that behind every good man is an incredible woman. I say this. Behind every good man is a very surprised mother-in-law. And next to every great man, next to him, is a great woman in We show love and honor to Pastor Rubino. We love you, honor you, thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Do you love your pastors today? Yeah. Hey, it's it's Pastor's birthday, so make sure you show him some love. You know, I told the team, put his cash up on the screen, man, you know, but they said, wow, now we're going to keep it, we're going to keep it humble. Um, We're going to keep it modest, but... Show him some love. Make sure he knows you love him. Make sure he knows that you appreciate him. Will you do that? Come on, will you do that for him? Amen. Awesome. Awesome. 
My wife is here. My wife is here. I just want to show some love to my wife, Diana. She's, uh, we've been married for 20 years. She's been my girlfriend for 25 years. And uh, she's, we've been married for 20. She's been my wifey for 20 and my baby mama for 11. We have two daughters, Chloe and Bailey. They're 11 and 8. And it's the best time of our lives. So I love you, babe. Thanks for being here. And so love you guys. Love this team. Love everyone that's here. Um, are you ready for the word? Let's get into the word. Let's go. Let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Romans chapter eight. <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse 37. I want to bring your attention to something. I want to bring your attention to something. Verse 37, verse 37. The scripture says it this way. Do you have a Bible with you? Yeah. Pull out your Bible. Pull out your Bible app. It's okay. Se vale. Se vale tener la Biblia en la iglesia. I don't know why I got a bilingual spirit in this service. That's so funny. I guess all the chusmas in this service. You know what I'm saying? So, con la raza. Let's go. Man, I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm family. I know I'm family. And so, all right, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Para de cotorrear cruz. Vámonos. Romans 37. Get your Bible out. There's a few things that I'm going to say to you. I do believe that there is a move of God before we're said and done today. I do believe that there is a spirit of conviction, a spirit of repentance, a spirit of commitment and sacrifice that is going to move in our time together. And when we get to the moment of response, I want to, us to get to the moment of response having understood the word. Does that make sense to you? May we be believers who don't just feel the word but know the word. We don't just want emotional responses. We want deliberate, intelligent decisions because that's, that's the recipe for firm commitment. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a follower of Jesus who has firm commitment. I don't just want to be a hearer of the word. I want to be a, a doer of the word. Amen? Amen. So take your Bible out. Take something, write something to put notes in, the, the app's phone, your husband's shirt, whatever. Just let's do it. Let's do this thing. Romans 37 says it this way. Yet in all these things, all these things, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced. I need you to bring, bring your, your highlight to that. I am convinced and continue to be convinced. Let me give you the, the, the punchline in the beginning. There are going to be things in your life that are going to try to unconvince you. There are going to be things in your life that are going to try to dissuade you. The King James Version says it this way, I am persuaded. It is the same prefix as persistence, persevere. That means to maintain, to remain, to stand firm, to be stubborn in the best way. I am convinced. I am persuaded. When I am persuaded, can't nobody tell me nothing. And you used to have that spirit before you were walking with Jesus. Nobody could tell you nothing. If someone says something to you, it was a quick knuckle up. You would catch, I'm from L.A., so we would say it this way. You're going to catch an ABD. Anyone know what an ABD is? No, let me give it to you. It's an automatic beat down. You try to talk to me sideways, I'm going to give you an ABD. You're going to catch an automatic beat down. Why? Because you're not going to convince me of anything otherwise. Once my mind is made up, my mind is made up. Or for some reason, when we come to Jesus... Our mind stops being convinced. And I'm grateful that the Lord is not a one-time kind of God. This is good news for you and me because I know what it's like to walk through seasons of my life where I need a second chance. Does that make sense to you? I need the opportunity to be convinced again. I need an opportunity to be convinced again. So Paul says, I continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things threatening nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors and nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. And if you look at that through first glance, you'll look at it and say, wow, nothing can keep God from loving me. And that's true. Nothing can keep God from loving you. Not the worst sins listed in scripture will stop God. So you've got to ask the question, if God is unstoppable in his love, then why did the Holy Spirit inspire Paul to write this text? 
I'll give you the answers in the back of the book. Would anyone else needed the answer? Are you old enough to remember when the answers were in the back of the math book? Now they're on Google. Back in my day, we had it work to cheat. You know what I'm saying? That's just... Why would the Holy Spirit inspire Paul to write this? Here's why. Because while God can say, I love you, and how many of y'all know God loves you? That was cute. That was cute. And if he saved you from a cute situation, well, then I guess it's okay. Oh, can I talk to the 11 o'clock service? I said, that was cute. And if he saved you from a cute situation, then that would have been all right. But I can sense in this room that it wasn't cute in the chaos. And it wasn't cute in the trauma. And it wasn't cute in the brokenness. And it wasn't cute in the hurt. And it wasn't cute in the abandonment. But God, save me and love me. Do you know God loves you? I said, do you know God loves you? Do you know God loves you? Do you know his eye is on your life? His heart is for you. Do you know God loves you? Then say it with me and say, God loves me. Say it one more time. Say it for the people in the back. Look at your neighbor and say, God loves me. Now look at your other neighbor who you didn't pick first and say, well, I guess God loves you too. I guess God loves you too. And that's great. And I love that you know that God loves you. But my question is this. How do you know that? How do you know? How do you know that God loves you? And there's a world. There's a world outside of this headquarters of disciples and Jesus people and born again Christians. There's a world out there. We're supposed to take it. Hello. Anyone else watching the service? I did. We're supposed to take it where? Out there. So there's a world out there that in here will say, God loves me. And they'll say, how do you know? Tell me, please. I want to know not just that God could love. I want to know how God loves. So how do you answer that question? How does God love you? How do you know God loves you? That's two services in a row. Someone said, I'm alive. I love it. I'm alive. How do I know? How do I know? How do I know that God loves me? How do you know? It's very simple. You've got to know the word. John 3, 16. Do you know it? The scripture says, for this is how. New Living Translation. So if you want to know how God loves you, read the word. This is how God loves us. He loves the world. How does he love the world? He gave his only son. And that anyone who would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. So the answer to the question, how do you know God loves you? Is the same for every child of God. For all of us. How do you know God loves me? Write this down. I know God loves me. This is how I know God loves me. Write it down. This is how I know God loves me. He gave me Jesus. He gave me Jesus. Now, it's easy to clap in church to that kind of a declaration, but if you're anything like me, I've had seasons in my life where I get stuck on the first half of that text. God loved the world, God loved the world, God loved the world, but over time, it began to just decay into my selfishness. Can I, can I keep it a buck on a Sunday morning? Can I be honest on a Sunday morning? Okay, very good. Let, and let me just say this. I love that at our church, we teach real and raw, but also real anointed. I, I don't know that I would trust a preacher that's not honest. Hello. So if I can keep it a buck, God loved the world. Over time, it would actually morph into, but God loves my world. God loves my world. God loves what I want. Can I be honest with you? And in my life, it would become, I know God loves me because he does what I want. I know God loves me because he gives me what I want. I know God loves me because I have a wish list that say, God, I know you love me. What do you do? This right here. Bang, 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 bang. Anyone else got a wish list? Don't leave me by myself. Anyone else in the room, you would say, man, well, you know what, Cruz, now that you mention it. Now that, bro, now that you mention it, I kind of have been looking at that truck. And it's like, hey, God, if you love me, you're laughing because you have the list. You're laughing. Cruz, how do you know God loves you? Well, I got the job, man. I got the, and I love that. I love that he gives jobs. Cruz, how do you know? I got the house. 
Because how do you know? I finally got a girlfriend. If you know my life, it's like, that's a miracle after miracle. Open door after open door. Come on, somebody. That's how I know, man. <laughs> how do you know? I got, the, I got a better salary, bro. One more digit in front of the decimal point. Praise God. How do you know? Man, I, she's my wife now. That's how I know. How do you know? Man, we got kids. How do you know we have another kid? I don't know that's really love. That's, I'm still trying to figure that out. But hear me, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we'll turn the love of God into our personal shopper, our personal wish list. And as much as I'm all for, I'm all for the Lord giving you giving you things that are a blessing to your life. Pray for the job. Pray for the salary. Pray for the wife. Pray for the girlfriend. Pray for the increase. Pray for the open doors. But be careful that you don't say, I, love, I know God loves me because of what he gave me, and it doesn't begin with Jesus. The scripture says this is how all of us know that God loves us. I know that God loves me because he gave me Jesus, period. That's it. Period. Period. And that's a good place to preach to yourself. Because sometimes you've got to talk to yourself and say, Cruz, it's Jesus. Period. It's not Jesus plus my dreams. It's not Jesus plus my ambitions. It's not Jesus plus all of my wish lists. It's not Jesus plus all of my entitlements. It's not Jesus plus all of my preferences. It's not Jesus plus all of my opinions. And I know that's hard to say on a Sunday morning at an American church. Now, we got some friends that are watching from around the world, and you understand, sometimes there's a context of life where all I have is Jesus. And I can't see past today. And if Jesus is all there is, then Jesus is all I need. I don't need anything. Nobody owes me anything. God gave me everything through Jesus. And I wonder how much our lives would change. And I wonder how much we would sleep better at night. And I wonder how much joy we would have when we would release our need to be happy and take on the responsibility of being content and say, I may not have what I want, but in Jesus God gave me everything I need. How do I know that God loves me? I know that God loves me because he gave me Jesus. Period. period. And some of us need to put a period on the end of that statement today. Today. Because you're wondering and you've been questioning the love of God. Because he didn't give you stuff. Oh, come on, baby. Can I step on your toes a little bit? Can I help you? Here we go. God's priority is not to make you happy. No, me gustaba, pero ya empezó. Me cayó bien, pero ya no sé. His, his priority is not to make you happy. His priority is to make you whole body, mind, and spirit. He didn't say, I have stuff. He said, I am holy. And he shares his holiness with you through Jesus. And in his holiness, we are made whole. The word holy literally means to be perfect, infallible, but it also means to be complete, lacking nothing. I wonder what your life would look like if you would say, I am holy because of Jesus. I'm holy. I want you to write the word holy down, not in the notes. I didn't say it in the first service. I'm giving it to you fresh out the oven. You ready? Write the word holy down. The word holy means I'm complete and I lack nothing. I wonder what would happen if you would say, I know God loves me, not because I got the Hummer. <laughs> well, that new electric joint is dope. Jesus. Watch. But because, not because I got the thing, but because I was made holy. Watch. And if we click on that, then we can step into the blessing being complete and not eating the blessing to complete us. So in Jesus, I am holy. I am complete 
and I lack nothing. And I feel like I want you to say it out loud because your ears need to hear what your spirit is shouting to you right now. Hey, you are complete and I lack nothing. Oh, I need you to say it with some boldness and some faith. Like you got to convince yourself. I am and I even when I don't have enough right now, I am, and I, even when I feel like I could do a little bit more, I am, and I, this is how I know God loves me. Why? Because he gave me Jesus, period, and I'm complete, and I lack nothing. How do I know God loves me? God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And I love that God loves you. But I don't know if you've ever been in a lopsided relationship. Or maybe you've seen it. You know, maybe it's someone, you might be sitting next to them, and so I'm not going to make you identify. Because snitches get stitches. Does that happen in the valley also? Yeah, it happens in El Paso too. But I wonder if you've ever, if you've ever experienced a disproportionate relationship where there's a lot of love coming from one person. Well, let me, let me paint the picture a little bit better. Do you remember the moment, and hopefully you're still, you're like, you're still with that person today. <laughs> Do you remember the moment you were sure how you felt about her? Or about him? You know what I'm talking about? You know, I talk to a lot of, I get the opportunity to serve all kinds of people, but we're surrounded by Gen Z years, by 20 and 30 year olds, and it's like, Pastor, I know it's real. I think she's the one, Pastor. How do you know? Because she's been to church once in the last month, and uh, <laughs> this, this might be it. This, this, might, this, might, this might be it. How do you know? We've been together, man, we've been, we've been together a long time, like six weeks. And, uh, you know, whatever your story is, did you ever have that moment in, you know, in my context, it's a her, right? You look at her, and like, you're sure, you know how you feel. And you look at her just in those big brown eyes. And she's just looking back at you, and you say, hey, um, man, we've been through a lot together, huh, in the last four weeks couple of Netflix series and uh, you know, Applebee's is our spot and it's just <laughs> but you just look and you say hey uh, I love you I love you and she looks back at you or that person your person looks back at you and just right back in your eyes and says, thank you. <laughs> First of all, for everyone who's had that happen in the room, will you raise your hands so we can pray for you? Can we just, can we pray? For, oh man, there's a, it's just in the room. <laughs> He's a mender of the brokenhearted. <laughs> you know, that's funny. That's, man, that's a tough situation. And no one wants to go through that, right? But I wonder how many of us have done that to the Lord? Or he speaks over your life and he gives his son and the life of his son and he gives his spirit and he showers you and he says, I love you. And we say, thank you, Jesus. I love you. And we say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's entirely possible to live a life as a believer and have the Lord daily say, I love you, and we not say it back. Did you know that in your life, it's not supposed to be one directional where he just showers love and you just say thanks and you take it? as if you have no idea what it took for that love to have arrived to you in the first place. 
to be completely oblivious that it took the humiliation of a God to put on sinful flesh, to suffer what you and I suffer, to take our place in punishment so that we can take his place in righteousness, to take our place in separation from God and the Father so that you and I would have an opportunity to step into right relationship with the Father as sons and daughters of God, to take our place in sin, the one who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God by faith. He took our place in death, Philippians 2 says it, that he was obedient, even obedient to the death of a cross so that we could take his place in life. And I wonder how many of us simply hit him back with the, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. See, the goal is not just to be grateful the goal is to be aware and to be just as committed in this love relationship as he is. And I don't want us to be a people who hear God say, I love you. And we go talk about how much he loves us. And we go say how much he loves us. And we sing songs about how much he loves us. And we write posts on social media about how much he loves us. But we don't live lives that say it back. So the question today is not whether or not God loves you and whether or not God is saying, I love you. The question is whether or not you know how to say it back. Do you know how to say it back? The Apostle Paul writes under the impression of the Holy Spirit to teach us how to say it back. And he says, look, we're more than conquerors, Romans 8, 37. We're more than conquerors. In all these things, we're more than conquerors. I don't have time to unpack all the things that we're fighting because you're not a conqueror if you're not in a fight. That's the only way you're in a conqueror. And can I tell you, you're not a trust fund baby. Here's what I mean. You have to fight for what you got. You already have victory. Let's give you some good theology, some good doctrine. You already have victory in Christ Jesus. We have victory over death, sin, hell, and the grave. We've overcome through Jesus. We've overcome. However, I don't just live a life where I know I have victory. I have to live a life where I walk in victory. And so I'm not fighting to obtain. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not fighting to win. I'm fighting to obtain what was won. I have to go occupy the victory that Jesus gave me. And so Paul is saying in your life, there will be resistors that will try to keep you from saying it back. This is why the statement, but you're more than a conqueror, means so much. It means that you are dominating the things that are tr in your life trying to keep you from saying it back to Jesus. Again, I don't have time to unpack it, but some of the things that keep us from saying it back to Jesus, Paul says, distress and peril. Read verse 35, distress and peril. What is that? That's pressure. Did you know that pressure in your life, feeling overwhelmed in your life will keep you from saying it back? Your life is not meant to be lived in a state of being overwhelmed, frazzled, frantic, stressed at the end of your rope. On the contrary, he said, I've given you peace. He's the prince of peace. The scripture says that nakedness and danger and persecution and peril. What does that mean, Pastor? I'll tell you what it means. Danger and persecution literally means to face opposition and hostility because of your decision for Jesus. Many of you in the room today, this, you're the first generation that is walking and pursuing the Christian faith. You, you lived with a tradition of man. You lived with religious traditions, but no real power, no real relationship. And I say that respectfully. I've been there myself. But then somewhere along the line, you come to a church like Lifeline, and you walk in, and you hear the worship, and you hear the word, and it impacts you. And something on the inside of you comes to life, and you say, what is this? And it's the spirit of the living God that can meet you where you are, that can meet you in a place where there's real presence, and real encounter, and real power. Now what happens? Now I'm no longer fighting a fight to have a relationship with God. I'm fighting the fight to oppose the voices of my family and my loved ones. 
ones who when I used to be caught up in their darkness and you used to be caught up in their addiction, they were, fu- they were fine with me. It's funny that it says that misery loves company. So they loved me when I was company in their misery. But now that I've walked into a new life, now that I've walked a path of freedom, now that I've walked a new recovered life, restored life, a life where I'm the head and not the tail, a life where I'm above and not beneath, a life where I'm the lender, not the borrower, a life where I'm blessed, not broke, busted, and disgusted, a life where I'm the son of God, a life where I'm favored by God, a life where I walk in the opportunity, where I walk in the light, where I walk after life in the spirit and not flesh and destruction. Now you're going to hate on me. Now you're going to talk about me. And it's funny, they're pissed that you don't go to the church that they don't go to either. I just said pissed on Sunday morning. I'm sorry. It's yeah. Welcome to the valley. I get it. Something just came over me. I don't know what I started cussing the church. Welcome to the nine five (laughs) six. That's how we do it in the (laughs) H. Hear me, hear me. And there are very real things that are fighting you. To keep your life from saying it back. For some of you today, the Apostle Paul says in in Romans 8, 35 and 36, he said, will nakedness keep you? See, nothing can stop God from loving you. Nothing can. But in 8, 35, he says, who can? Not God. You know who can? I can. I can stop me from saying it back. I can't stop God from saying it to me. But I can stop me from saying it back. Paul makes, makes a statement that nakedness keeps us from the love of God. You know, for many of you, it's not about clothes. I'm glad you're wearing clothes this morning. But it is about being uncovered. Not having the appropriate covering in your life. You know, if you've been around church a little bit, you may have heard the statement covering. What that means is that you have the right authority over your life. For many of us in the room, and I'm I'm just, I got to pastor you a little bit. Many of us in the room struggle. We struggle saying it back to the Lord because we won't be under authority. We won't walk submitted to the voice of God, to the word of God, and to the men and women of God. And it keeps your life from saying it back. What's keeping you from saying it back this morning? What's been stopping you? What's caused you to stop at just simply saying thank you? You know, I remember, now, I'm speaking hypothetically. I'm not going to admit that I ever said thank you to someone who told me they loved me. But I can imagine saying thank you when someone says I love you to me because of fear of commitment. Because what I think it's going to mean for me in terms of responsibility, man, if I say I love you back, that means we're together. (laughs) What does it mean for me in terms of commitment if I say it back? Or what does it mean in terms of sacrifice if I say it back? Man, if I say it back to her, I'm sacrificing all my other options. I'm sacrificing all my other opportunities. All the other realities that I could have, I'm sacrificing when I say I love you too. But friends, there's only one way to live this life with Christ. And it's a life of commitment and sacrifice. It's a life where like the church fathers before us, we stand in the presence of God and we say, I've decided to follow Jesus. The world behind me, the cross before me, I've decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to say I love you too. I've decided to say it back. I've decided, I've decided 
that I'm not going to be a halfway believer and only get what he gives and not give him what he's asking for. I've decided. No one forced me to do it. No one's holding me to an obligation. I've decided. And today I believe as we go into Holy Week and as we go into the celebration of Easter, that we ought to have a reminder of he's waiting for you to say it back. What's keeping you? Is it life? See, that's what Paul talks about. Neither life nor death will keep me. You know, when he says life or death, what he's talking about is the pressure of today and the uncertainty for tomorrow. Hey, I'll, I'll step into it with you. There are times where it's like, God, like if, if I say it back to you, that means I have to surrender, surrender control to you. And I don't know if I like living without control. If I say it back to you, I don't know if I like taking the passenger seat. I kind of like it when you let me be at the wheel and you ride shotgun with me. Will you say it back? Will you say it back? This is the difference between halfway believers and sons and daughters. This is the difference. And Paul reminds us as he ends the thought in verse 38, he says, look, you have to be convinced and continue to be convinced. See, for many of us in this room, the, I firmly believe the moment the, or the reason this time together at this moment has gotten so somber and so quiet is because we're all at that tension. All of us, myself included, we're in that tension. We are all facing opportunities to either be unconvinced and say, you know what? I got it wrong, man. This thing wasn't worth it. Or to be convinced again. See, that's the life of the believer where every day we see him clearer than we saw him the day before. And you were convinced at some point in your life, that's why you're here. But at this point in your life, you have an opportunity to be convinced again. Will you say it back? Whatever you're facing in your life, whatever it is that's been trying to dissuade you, are you willing to say it back? Stand to your feet with me as we prepare to end our time together. When Paul closes his time and his statement in Romans 8, 38, he makes these statements. He says, I'm convinced, man. I'm convinced. You know, that word convinced simply means I'm persuaded. You can't change my mind. And can I tell you, friends, that this region, this valley, let's zoom in even more. Your families, your friends, your coworkers, they don't just need men and women of God who say, man, God loves me and, God, and he can love you too. What they need is examples of people who say, hey, God loves me and I love him too. And this is how I say it back in my everyday life. This is how. Watch, listen. I say it through my commitments and my sacrifices. That's how I say it back. I say it back through my commitments and my sacrifices. I say it back when I decide and I choose to believe that Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. He's the point. He's enough. Everything else is great, but as long as I have Jesus, he's enough. I say it back when I choose to make Christ's word, the word of God, my highest validation and the highest priority in my life. Not my way. Simply put, let me just say it to you very simply. I say it back when I commit to the Lord, Lord, your way, not my way. Your will, 
not my will. You see how saying it back requires commitment and sacrifice? Sometime last year I got asked, Pastor Cruz, what do you think the most powerful word in the Bible is? And there's a lot of powerful words in the Bible. But there's a word in the New Testament upon which I believe our salvation hinged. And it was a moment, and we're about to celebrate it on Friday. It, it, it happened on Good Friday. There's a moment where Jesus finds himself alone in prayer in a garden. Many of you have grown in church and you know the word, and it's the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the place of pressure, the place of commitment and sacrifice. And Jesus is having a moment of real transparency with his father. And just like you, he had a list. He had something he was hoping would happen for him. You see his humanity in this moment. He says, Father, listen, if you may, let this cup pass from me. I don't, know, I don't know that I want what I signed up for. And I'm grateful that we have a savior and a priest, a high priest, who's not out of touch with what it's like to be human, who's not out of touch with what it's like to have a preferred way you want your life to go. And can I tell you that God isn't put off by you sharing your preferences, by you sharing your hopes, your dreams, your heart. But you've got to include the most powerful word that I believe is one of the most powerful words in all of the scripture. Because the master says, Father, if you will, please take this from me. And a lot of you have been praying, Father, if you please give this to me. Father, if you please take this from me. Father, if you please do this for us. Father, if you please. But here goes what I believe is the most powerful words in all of scripture. Father, if you please, will you? Nevertheless, Nevertheless, I believe that's one of the most powerful words because it hinges the next statement. Nevertheless, not your will, but not my will, but your will. Not your will, not my will, but your will. Not my will, but your will. And in that nevertheless, you hear him saying it back to his father. I love you enough to trust you. I love you enough to be honest with you. I love you enough to be open and transparent and vulnerable with you, but I also love you enough to commit and sacrifice under your authority. And if we're going to be people who say it back with our lives, we've got to be people who commit and sacrifice every time we say it back. And I don't know what you need to say nevertheless to, but you do. I don't know what your list has been that you've put before the Lord, but you do. But I think today is a day where we say, Lord, Nevertheless, I'm going to say it back. I love you too. I love you too. And in a moment, I'm going to open this altar. You know, I love that we use the word altar in our churches. Here's why. Metaphorically speaking, this place represents what in the Old Testament was an actual building of a, an installation of stone where men and women of God would come before the Lord and they would bring something to him. And classically, altars in the Old Testament were places where men and women would go to renew a commitment and to make a sacrifice. In a moment, I'm going to open this altar, and the Holy Spirit is already prompting many of you. There's over a thousand people in this service today. There are hundreds of you that the Lord's already, He's already been speaking. Will you say it back to me in this area? Will you say it back to me with this thing? Will you say it back to me with your son, with your daughter? Will you say, will you trust me with them? Will you stop holding back your love and trust for me because I haven't done what you think I should do? And will you give me what I've been asking for, which is all of you? So in a moment, I'm going to open this altar, but I need you to make a decision today. What's the commitment you're going to make and what's the sacrifice you're going to make? For many of you, the commitment you're going to make is to release control. I commit to trust you. I commit to honor you, I commit. For many of you, it's gonna to be to sacrifice something. Lord, this is gonna be the day where I kill this pride. 
what I'm going to lay on the altar is this ego, is this doubt. What I lay on this altar is my entitlement. So I've been, if I've been speaking to you and the Holy Spirit has been prompting you, well, then the altar is open. Come make your commitment. Come say it back right now. Hundreds of you are going to move. Come on. Come on. Come say it back. Come on. Come say it back. Come on. Come say it back. All over the room. All over the room. All over the room. The Holy Spirit is prompting. He's nudging you. And yes, listen, I know you, I know you can make that commitment where you're sitting. But he's asking, just take the step. Make the commitment. Take the sacrifice. Do it my way. Do it the way he's telling you to do it. Do it the way this crazy preacher from El Paso is telling you to do it. I'm talking to him, through him to you. And let this be the moment where you begin obedience. Come on, move right now. If that's you, move right now. This is, Lord, this is the moment I'm going to begin to obey you. I never go to the front. I don't even raise my hands in worship. But you know what? Nevertheless, not my way, but your way. I'm going to do it your way. Let this decision to move right now be the place where your obedience to him begins to say, you know what, God? I love you too. I love you and I'm going to obey you. I love you and I'm going to obey you. I love you and I'm going to do it your way. I'm committing and I'm going to sacrifice my fear. I'm going to sacrifice my pride. I'm going to make a commitment to do things your way. Come on, help us out. Help us out. Help, help us spread them out that way so more friends can come forward. There's so many of y'all coming. Come on, right now, right where you're at, just raise your hands towards heaven if you're able to. And make you pray. I'm not going to give you the words. I'm not going to give you the words, but you pray this commitment. You pray what you're laying down before God. Whatever it's going to take to say it back, to choose to say it back to him this morning. I love you too. I love you enough to trust you. I love you enough to let it go. I love you enough to forgive. I love you enough to say what I have today is all I need. I love you enough to say I'm going to follow you. I love you enough to say I'm going to close those doors. I love you enough to say I'm going to pick my head up. I love you enough. I'm saying it back, Lord. This is me saying it back to you right now. Come on, hands towards heaven. Hands towards heaven. Hands towards heaven. Father, today we say it back to you, Lord. You have our hearts. If my heart is what you want, then you got it, Lord. If my heart is what you want, you got it. If my obedience is what you want, you have it. If my humility is what you want, you have it. If my forgiveness is what you want, you have it, Lord. If my open-mindedness to other opportunities and other alternatives and other outcomes, well, then you have it, God. I just want to do it your way. I want you to know that I don't just want you to love me. I love you, too. And I'm going to say it back right now in this moment in Jesus' name. Come on, just in your own way. Begin to say it. Begin to commit. Begin to tell him, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Come on, let's give him everything in Jesus' name. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Say, Jesus, 
eye closed, every head bowed. Father, I pray that as your children built altars right where they are, whether they're up front or they made commitments where they're sitting. Lord, your word says and teaches us that every place where you received the sacrifice, every place where you received the commitment was always marked by a fresh expression of your presence. Lord, I pray that as these men and women sincerely commit to you, sincerely sacrifice to you, Father, I pray for a renewed, a renewed presence of your spirit, a new touch, Even right now, Father, you're doing it right now. You're making it obvious that you're for them, that you're with them. Lord, I thank you that your presence brings a sense of safety, a sense of belonging. Father, will you quiet every fear as they've committed to you, Lord, as they've sacrificed to you, quiet every fear. Father, I pray against critical spirits. I pray against overwhelming doubt. I pray against condemnation, voices of accusation that have just been barraging them and overtaking them and overrunning them. Now, Lord, we say you're done. Satan, you're done messing with God's people. Be quiet. We're not going to let you have a say anymore. God said, I love you, and I'm saying it back to him. So, Father, I pray now that you lift our heads. Lift our heads. Lord, I pray for a boldness. I pray for a boldness in these men and women that they're not afraid to stand and say, I love Jesus too. It's easy to say God loves me. It's hard to say I love God too. It's easy to say God loves me. But will you do the hard thing and say, I love Jesus too. And I want to take a moment and just pray over this church and this service a spirit of boldness, that you would stand in your spaces and in your places with the boldness to say it back. If you're with it, just raise your hands towards heaven. Let me pray over you. Father, whatever it takes, we commit and we sacrifice. Whatever it takes. Lord, I pray against the fear of man. Lord, we're done being afraid of what man can say. We're done being afraid of what man can do. We're done being afraid of criticism. We're done being afraid of that, Lord. No longer that I'm going to speak loud in every place that I am. I love God too. That's why I have integrity. I love Jesus. That's why I choose purity. I love Jesus. That's why I walk by his word. I love Jesus. That's why I don't go here no more. I love Jesus. That's why I'm ending this relationship. Lord, I pray right now that in this boldness to say it back, you're closing doors that need to be closed. There used to be many of us that would walk through doors that would lead us to death, walk through doors that would separate us from you right now as we say it back I pray that you would close those doors and you lock them Lord the word says in Revelation 10 that the son of David has the keys of life and death has the keys to close and so I pray right now that you would close doors that even I can't go open them even if I try right now Lord I thank you that you're closing doors on destructive behaviors on destructive patterns on destructive addictions you're closing doors on toxic relationships you're closing Closing doors on death in our life, God. And even if we go try to open it again, I thank you that we fail at opening them. Why? Because you've called us to say it back. And Lord, I declare that there's an opening of doors. Open doors that no man can close, Father. That when we stand in boldness, Father, that we become light in darkness. Lord, that your goodness and your mercy surely follow us, Father. That you open doors of favor. You open doors of strength. You open doors of overcoming. You open doors of authority. You open doors of dominance. You open doors of confidence, Father, that no one can close them. And even when I feel insecure, when I'm making bold statements, and even if my voice shakes, I'm going to stand in the places that God has put me. And I'm going to say, I love him too. I love him with every decision, with every word, with every attitude, with every cent I spend. I love him too with every interaction I have with friends and family. I love him too. I'm going to witness to my family. I'm going to talk about Jesus at work. I'm going to talk about Jesus at the gym. I'm going to talk about Jesus at Starbucks. I'm going to talk about Jesus on my Instagram. I'm not afraid to say it back. In the Jesus name, we just release a spirit of boldness over this church. And all men will see that our God is alive. Our God
Are you, are you going to say it back with your life? Praise God. Hey, listen, don't move. We got one more prayer to pray. This is so important. There's so many of you in this room. Many of us have made a decision to follow Jesus at our church. We call that salvation. When Jesus steps into our situation, changes us, forgives us, uh, forgives us of our sins, and brings us into relationship with him and with the Father. We're not, we're, we're not outsiders. We're children of God. Did you know that you're supposed to live and you should live in a relationship with the Father? Not where you think he's mad at you, but where you're convinced and you know that he's madly in love with you. And you can walk with him as, as his child, as his son and his daughter. That is what Jesus came for. So if you're here today and you would say, hey, Cruz, I don't know that I've ever said it back to Jesus that way. I don't know where I've said it where, Jesus, I trust you. I receive you. I open my life to you. Many of us have made that prayer before many years ago. Some just made it last service. But if that's you today, I want to pray with you. Where you would say, Lord, I, 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 want, I want to walk in relationship with you. Maybe you used to walk in relationship and somewhere along the line you stopped saying it back. Well, today's the day you come back. And so I want to pray for you too. And so in a moment, I'm going to lead our church in a prayer. But if you are here today and you say, Pastor, will you pray for me when you pray right now? Will you pray for me? I want to know who I'm praying for. So if that's you, you say, Pastor, right now when you pray, will you pray with me? Will you pray for me? Absolutely, I will. I just want to know who I'm praying for. So if that's you, will you raise your hand? If you're saying, Cruz, will you pray for me right now? Wow, I'm for sure, bro. Look at all these hands. Thank you, Jesus. Now, everyone under the sound of my voice, from side to side, from front to back, let's raise our hands towards heaven. I'm going to give you the words to pray, but you're going to give it all the faith and all the meaning. Say this, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you lived you died and you rose again. I believe that you are enough to forgive my sins and make me new. I receive your forgiveness, your grace, your love, and your mercy. I declare that Jesus is Lord and Lord of my life. I declare that I'm made new, I'm saved, I'm born again, and I'll never be the same ever again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, can we celebrate everyone who just made that decision? Praise God. Now listen, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Look, 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 look. Mi rancho's still going to be open, okay? Don't worry. Like, it's still going to be open, all right? But listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or you prayed it again and you got right with God today, listen, don't leave today without doing a couple things. Number one, make a commitment to just keep coming back. Just keep coming back to church. We're gonna, we'll teach you the Bible. We'll teach you how to walk with Jesus. Just keep coming back. Secondly, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or you prayed it again and got right with God, find someone in our lobby or in our or somewhere on our campus with a bright green shirt and say, hey, I just made a decision to Jesus for Jesus today. What do I do? They will get you connected. Amen? Amen. Do you love Jesus? Praise God. Hey, I love y'all so much. Thanks for coming to church today. Amen. What a powerful moment in God's presence. Amen. Can someone say, I love you, Jesus? And you have plenty of opportunities this week to say it and to show out in our community. We have extravaganza on Friday. Don't forget, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family, come over with the children, bring everyone, bring a picnic, bring your pit. There's gonna be a carnesazo out there somewhere. From the sound of my voice, remember to invite. And also Easter Sunday, make your way back here. God is doing great things. God bless you.